There's a lot going on here today. I've got a new twist on lines, along with a freebie, two technique experiments, five cards, plus a big celebration and a giveaway. If you've been here before, you know about lines. This acronym helps you to analyze your inspiration and then change it up so you can make it into your own work of art. I use it a lot, and many of you have been kind enough to say that you also find it helpful. So in today's video, I'm sharing some more in-depth tips and strategies for transforming inspiration into your own. But don't panic about remembering everything or writing it down because I've got a free worksheet for you that you can download and print to use whenever you're inspired. And of course, I've got an inspiration I want to use. It's this gorgeous card that my friend Lydia made. I'll be using three different techniques, including two experimental adaptations of one of my recent favorites. Let's jump in and start with the basics. LIME stands for list, include, modify, exclude, and spin. Let's start by taking a look at Lydia's card and we'll start with list. When I list the elements of my inspiration, I found that using categories helps me fully explore it. I always start with color. This is the strongest visual link between your card and your inspiration. Lydia's card has bold, vibrant shades of yellow, red, and a small patch of blue with some overlapping blending areas. She has a white card base and a white die cut sentiment. Then I look at the techniques she used. Lydia used some kind of paste with liquid watercolors. I don't have that, so I know I'm going to have to modify the technique. Then I look at the elements, and this includes the occasion, which is thank you in this case, and the layout. Lydia's card is an A2 portrait oriented card. She has flowers, she has leaves, she has white glitter cardstock. When I look at what I want to include, I usually choose a couple of my favorite elements. In this case, I'm in love with the colors and the kind of blended look to them. So that's going to feature in all my cards. Let me show you how I made my cards and then we'll come back and take a look at each one and how it relates back to Lydia's inspiration. My first technique is one I know will work. Ink smooshing over a heat embossed stamped image. I've got this big floral stamp from Altenew's Bouquet of Love in my Misty. I'm using one of the creative corners so that I can have this big image coming off all four edges of my panel of watercolor cardstock, and I stamped it twice with WOW embossing ink to make sure I got a really good impression. Then I poured opaque bright white powder over the top, shook off the excess and heated it with my heat gun until it was all melted and smooth. Then I did it again, stamped with embossing ink, poured embossing powder over and heated. And again, stamped, poured, heated. This will give my image slightly thicker lines that are really quite tall, and I'm hoping it'll give me really interesting lines where the inks kind of fall into the wells and pool. Let's see, shall we? I'm starting with red, but to make my red more interesting, I'm using Samba, which is quite warm, along with Party Dress, which is actually pink, and Flirty Fuchsia. I smoosh them down onto my glass craft mat, and I spritz them with quite a bit of water. I love how they start to move on the glass. I know I want my red area to be kind of in the top left of my embossed panel, so I'm not putting it flat into the colors, just dipping down that one area a few times, trying to get good coverage. And when I'm happy with that, I give it a quick dry with my heat gun. It doesn't need to be perfectly dry before I move on to my next color, which is Glitz. I'm doing the colors separately because I want them to blend on the paper and not on the glass mat. If all three primary colors blend together too much, I'll get mud, which is not the look I'm going for here. Again, I'm trying to control where the color is going, this time on the right side, but I'm having some trouble getting color into some of those deep wells, so I had to go back a couple of times until again I was happy with the coverage and I gave it another quick dry. Next I'm using Uptown. I only used one shade of yellow and blue rather than the three I used for the reds, largely because they'll already be blending and creating extra beautiful in-between shades, but I could very well have added more if I wanted to. I've got my first layer of Uptown on the panel and I'm not loving how there's almost a straight line there. I want more blending, so I know I'll be going back in once more to get a better mix. This time I dried it completely and you do want to be careful when you're heating up embossing powder because it will soften again, so you need to let it fully cool before trying to wipe away any color left on the embossed lines. I used a microfiber cloth that I had lightly spritzed with water and it cleaned the lines right up. I used the coordinating die to cut out the image. I love these bold colors, but I also love some white space on a card. But white space doesn't have to be boring. So to add some interest to my white panel, I used two Essential Rectangles for Stitching dies from Essentials by Ellen. This will give me a subtle, tone-on-tone -tone frame around my vibrant florals. 
I positioned the die cut on the panel, allowing the green-blue areas to hang off the bottom right corner, since that's the color we see the least of on Lydia's card. I used liquid glue to adhere the die cut, and then I trimmed off the extra bits. For a sentiment, I searched my Evernote inventory by selecting the dies notebook, and then typing in just T-H-A-N-K. This will give me all the thanks and the thank yous that I have in that notebook. Then I pulled out the actual dies so I can decide which one will work best for this card. It needs to be legible so it can't be too thin, but I really want the flowers to be the center of attention so it also can't be too big. I settled on this paper rose die that's fairly small, but it's also quite chunky, and I cut it three times from some scraps of white cardstock that I keep just for this purpose. When I stacked them all up, I still felt like the sentiment was competing with the white lines of the image, so I added a fourth layer in a dark gray, and that definitely made it easier to read. For some sparkle, I added some rainbow sparkle gems from Crafty Meraki. These gems are magical. As you tilt them in the light, you see pinks and yellows and blues and greens. They'll be the perfect addition to this card. Okay, let's take a look. I included Lydia's colors, the floral elements, the thank you sentiment, and the portrait layout. Before we go on, let's talk about modifying. This is where you can really have some fun. You can change the colors if you want. That's the easiest way to make your card look less like your inspiration. For me, I find that it's often the colors that attracted me, so I tend to leave them the same and find other ways to modify. You can change the elements. Instead of flowers, you could use hearts or circles or stars. You could change the number of flowers. Here I see three or four, but my bouquet has more, plus leaves. You can change the size of the elements. You could reverse the colors, and I'll talk more about that in a minute, or you could completely change your layout, and we'll talk more about that as well. Here I modified the technique, of course. I added more white space, a dotted frame, and my sentiment is gray rather than white. Exclude is where you can leave off any elements you didn't love about the inspiration, or maybe there's elements that don't really go along with some of the modifications you've made. I left off the white glitter cardstock in this case. And finally, spin is where you can add your signature touches. For me on this card, that dotted negative frame is probably my spin, as well as the rainbow gems. For card number two, I tried to mimic my alcohol inks with a stencil technique that I've been enjoying so much lately, and I used dye ink refills instead. I started with two sheets of watercolor cardstock. These are 5.5 by 8.5 inches each, and I've got refills in similar colors as the previous card. I think I left out Samba, and I've got this groovy flower stencil from A Colorful Life Designs. My biggest concern was how to get the colors moving and keep them moving on this cardstock that's really designed to absorb them, and I figured the answer had to be water. Lots of water. I spritzed both the panels until they were really quite wet, and then I started dropping down the ink refills. I was concerned about them staining the paper in those initial drops, so I added water as I went, and I'm pretty sure you can see what I've done wrong. I completely forgot to put down the stencil. Well, too late. I kept going until I had the page covered and the ink moving with the water, and I put the stencil on the other panel before sandwiching it all together, pressing it down with my hands, and then adding an acrylic block to hold it together so the ink could transfer. And after a couple of hours, I pulled it all apart. The paper was still quite damp, but the colors seemed to have stopped moving. I love how vibrant these are. I made two cards with this modified technique. The first one uses a large square panel along with a stacked up white die cut. I modified it to be a birthday card rather than a thank you card, and I used stickles to add some sparkle rather than glitter cardstock. I don't think I really excluded anything, and that's the beauty of limes. You can skip any of the steps and limes will still work. I guess if you skip them all, you would end up making the exact same card, so I guess you need to at least change one thing. For my spin, I added a frame made with the stitching die again, and also this card is my favorite signature four and a quarter inch square format. For my second card, I reversed everything by leaving the card white, but making my big thank you sentiment the colorful element. For my spin, I created a split circle panel by using two circle dies, and then I used some of the new waffle flower foam strips to pop them up. These strips come in two thicknesses, and I chose the thinner sixteenth of an inch pack. There are a number of different sizes of strips, and these long thin ones were perfect for popping up my frame, while the thicker ones helped support the back of the circle. I excluded the glitter, but I did add some sparkle with some Crafty Meraki Rose Garden gems. These ones have two tones of pink in them, and they really add a special wow factor. And of course, this is my signature four and a quarter inch square size. My last technique will look more familiar, except for one thing. 
Instead of using a stencil with alcohol inks, I cut this floral garden cover plate from Graphics Craft Plastic to see if it will act in a similar way to a stencil. My first concern was that it was curved a bit and not lying flat against the Yupo paper in my box, so I tried just bending it back and that seemed to flatten it out a bit. Then I grabbed some Copic refills in similar colors and I just started dropping them on, same as I've done in a number of my other videos. An orangey red, a bright pink, deep yellow, and a dark teal. Then I pressed the second piece on top so I would get a blended panel and I set them both aside to dry for a couple of hours. When I peeled the homemade stencil off, it occurred to me that I now have three pieces I can use. The stencil itself could make a pretty card. But I tried one more thing. I spritzed the die cut with alcohol. Remember, never do this with blending solution since it has resin in it. And then I pressed it onto another panel of Yupo and not only got a pretty negative pattern of the die cut, but I also reduced the intensity of the color on the actual die cut and I like that better. So again for these cards, I modified the technique. For my first card, I used the stencil panel, I trimmed it down to a square and then used a thanks die cut with a shadow. I cut the word right from the center of the panel, then added a white shadow and finally the die cut word back on top. This is a great way to get the continuous pattern, but still make the sentiment very legible. We can maybe call it adapted eclipse technique. So I modified the die cut sentiment to be a two layered sentiment rather than white. I excluded that glitter cardstock again, and for my spin, again, I added some magic crystal gems to my four and a quarter inch square card. For my second card, I used the reverse panel I created with the die cut. There's definitely more white space on this panel and the card, and I used a gold matte sentiment this time, excluding the glitter once again. This time I added the stitch frame around my focal panel right on the card base, and then I blended some of the same colored inks on the inside of my card so they can peek through to the front when it's closed and I finished with some periwinkle and rose garden gems. And of course I've got a few more panels I can use on future projects. Here's the link for the free PDF that you can download and print. You can use it as a worksheet or just keep it as a handy reference. And now for the celebration and giveaway. Earlier this week I reached 20,000 subscribers here on YouTube. I can't thank you enough. It just blows my mind that so many of you are interested in what I'm doing and I'm so grateful for you. To celebrate, 20 lucky winners will win a pack of those gorgeous Crafty Meraki gems. To be eligible, please comment down below which of the three techniques was your favorite. Ink smooshing, ink refills, or die cut as stencil. And I'll use a random number generator to choose the 20 winners from these comments. And I'll announce the winners here next Thursday, January 20th, 2022. Thanks so much for all your wonderful support and for watching. See you next time.